So I've just got um, our very nice and very kind police liaison officer who's here backstage. She said that there are going to be some police moving about at the back. It's nothing to be concerned about. They're just getting in position for when everybody wants to leave. So if you're seeing some police activity at the back, don't worry. Nothing untoward, I have been assured. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, he's actually come from one of my favorite places in the world. I spent the 4th of July there a couple of years ago, out in Arizona, in the USA. He's come from a place called Prescott, which is a beautiful city. He is a street fighter, one of President Trump's biggest supporters. So I want you to welcome him with all your spirit and all your might. It's Congressman Paul Gosa. thank you for having me here in your great country today. I understand, like me, you're all concerned about making your country great again. Coincidentally, it fell on the same week our president was in, in town, Donald Trump. Now, many of you may not know me. I'm a United States congressman from Arizona. But I suggest we know each other very well indeed. Now, if you look at the folks around you, we're of the same mind, the same heart, and the same spirit. Despite being two nations separated by an ocean, we also are two nations united by a common language. Historical ties, military and strategic objectives, economic links, and more importantly today, the same struggles. Now for years now, we have witnessed a full frontal assault on free speech. A full frontal assault on people who think, who through thick and thin, and through sometimes with rough edges, have sought to defend the freedoms our forebears fought alongside one another and died for. That's why when I first heard of the case of Tommy Robinson, I could not stay silent. What do we want? We want Tommy out. Now I know the United Kingdom does not have a First Amendment. The first part of our Bill of Rights was adopted back in 1791. I want to talk to you about that for a second. Now, I take the Bill of Rights seriously because not only does it underscore the self-evident truths, that my nation's founders fought so hard to secure. But it also limits the capability of people like me, congressmen, governments at large, from prohibiting people from exercising their speech, their rights. Now the First Amendment reads as follows. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or of the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. What you are doing here today is effectively a precursor to a campaign on your own First Amendment. Yes. 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 Now that's not me saying it, and I'm not telling you or your country what to do or how to be governed. But from the conversations I've had with the team around Tommy and the Britons concerned about this case, they tell me they wish they had a First Amendment. We are the people peacefully assembled today. We are petitioning your government for redress. What do we want? 
Now, Tommy, as a citizen journalist, has had his freedoms taken away by the British justice system. And for what? Speaking out against great demonstrable injustices. We know we watch in horror in the United States as we read about the rape and grooming gangs all around the country. I remember reading about it years ago when the media used to try to shut people up and calling them racist or worse. And then it was proven true. Thousands of young and vulnerable girls systematically targeted, raped, and groomed by predominantly Asian men over decades. And very, very few people held to account. Now they say Asian, but we don't. Let's, let's tell the truth, and let us, let us try in telling that truth to help the wider communities from whence these men came, to rid them of the scourge of these disgusting and depraved individuals. We know these men come from predominantly Pakistani, Bangladeshi, and Muslim backgrounds. Now I'm sure there are many in those communities who are just as disgusted as we are and embarrassed that these men have lived amongst them for so long. So firstly, I want to say to these people, come, stand with us, get out here and speak out. Now I know the cultural and societal pressures can be immense. But let me say this clearly. If you want to fight this behavior, fight these criminals, we are not your enemies. We are your friends. But let me also say this. The sound of silence is deafening. Do not be silent. Never be silent. Whether you were born in the West or immigrated here for a better life, know and remember your duty to defend freedom and fight injustice. Yes, freedom comes alongside the ability to be lazy and disengaged. But freedom also has attached to it the responsibility to be active and alert, vigilant and visible. Now as we approach Tommy's court appeal date, I want you all to take a few messages away with you today, if you'll allow me. One, do not stop fighting. The political establishment tried to sabotage this event in several ways. But do not be discouraged. Box smarter. Think harder. Outplay them, outwit them. They are not better than you. Two, stay peaceful.